Hey guys, we got a new week. We got some great market trends, but real quick before we get into that, I want you guys to go over and check out Discovery Bay Comics on YouTube. JB hosts that channel over there. Got a great Patreon going on. Comic Book Cousins, very cheap buying at that Patreon level. Support a great channel. Get the t-shirt, Comic Book Cousins. One great community over there. You hear us talking about them all the time. But either way, Discovery Bay Comics, check them out on YouTube. Now let's roll that intro. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, where we're helping to amplify your comic book collection through integrating community. We do a lot of comic pop culture content on this channel. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. This is Three Up, Three Down. We were covering those three hot and three cold comic book market trends for the week of February 12th, 2020. Either way, we're going to get into it right now, starting with that Three Up portion. And we are going to talk about Alejandro Jones, that female ghostwriter, right, Jack? Right, a lot of movement right now on Alejandro Jones. Now, if you're wondering, if you're new and you're not familiar with the character and you're saying, well, what is the deal here? Well, you're not alone because this character has made moves over a very short period of time. First off, we have movie news. Now, obviously, movie news always moves the needle on the secondary market more than anything else. And of course, it's coming from some of these movie websites that sometimes don't get it right, but it doesn't seem to matter these days with the speculation community. The moment any website reports that a character is showing up in a movie, the market goes crazy. You look at one website right now, and they'll say that she's going to show up as Ghost Rider in the Blade movie. Another says, no, it's going to be Doctor Strange too. Either way, the market is hot for Alejandro Jones. And we saw that Fear Itself Ghost Rider, number one, the first appearance um, of her. We saw it spike and hit like that $20 level. It hit everybody's hot top 10 lists all over the internet. But within the last week, we're seeing copies dry up on the internet. The book is pushing over 40 towards 50. And that one in 25 incentive has its most recent sale at $200 up from a usual about 40 to 60. So this book is red hot and moving up quickly. Yeah, I'll be curious to see if she is in the movie, what kind of role she's going to have, because that'll dictate on whether that book's going to stay up there or just come skyrocketing down. Means to be seen, but no doubt this is a hot character right now. And that's why it's the first pick on our three up portion. The next one we're getting into right now is Blink Vance. I always know when Blink Vance get hot because you know you're getting into that start of con season. Blink Vance, definitely take those to cons because if you don't have them with you and you see talent and you want to get signed, you're going to start paying a little bit escalated or an inflated price when you buy them at the cons themselves. But Blink Vance, Jack, tell us more about it. Well, that's one of the reasons why I love this show and this concept, Brian, is we're trying to be a little bit ahead of the curve, right? Instead of the way like these hot lists are already talking about what's already hot, we're talking about what's on the rise. And blank variants are on the rise. They're not at that point of scorching. We're not in the middle of the summer. This is the time when you want to be looking for those deals. Look for those dealers at those local conventions that are starting in the early part of the year. We're talking January, February, March, coming into April, May, where we start getting those bigger conventions. And find those dealers who are still blowing out those blank covers. Because come in the middle of those summertime, blank variants will be red hot as people are looking to get those uh, sketches commissioned. And we're seeing that become more and more of a popular trend on the comic convention scene, including getting those sketches slabbed by CGC. We're seeing companies take blank variants to new levels with these new high ratio blanks and these concept blanks and these colored blanks. Um, so the blank variant game is one that uh, is, is kind of a, a, undercover game to play because there are blank variants that I don't think people realize on the market um, are rare. I bought a stack of blanks just because they were so cheap. Uh, it was 10 blanks for $20 one time. Got home, was looking them up randomly, found out that I had a She-Hulk one that sold for about $75. I was shocked. Um, so that Rat Queen's one that was floating around out there is one. And well, in the independent market, it's, it's incredible. Spawn 139, um, Ninja Turtles blanks, um, you know, select transformers, uh, you know, depending on what that trade dress is that's on that blank. Um, some of them can be very rare and can really pop up infrequently. So, you know, the, now is the time, not all blanks are equal. Some aren't, aren't worth much at all. And some are 
um, scarce as can be, and it all depends on how many times a character's had a blank cover manufactured for them and how popular they are. But we talk about this a lot in the channel with Disney Plus, with the new phase in the MCU, new characters are becoming popular. So there's kind of some blanks that have been sort of forgotten and, and left in those kind of discount piles, which are now going to come back into prominence as some of these characters get attention on the secondary market. So then the last one we have this week for the three up portion is Scotty Young. I saw this, I saw Jack put this on the list and I'm not going to lie. I kind of looked at it a little bit crazy, but I also realized Scotty Young, I'm not a big fan of the baby variants, but there are some of his art that I really like, especially when you get into that Spider-Man books that he used to do. But either way, Jack, tell us why Scotty Young is up this week. Well, yeah, and I'm the same way um, where the baby variants may not be my thing. But uh, another thing to consider is Middle West, which is a book that got optioned in 2019, a hot book in 2019. Um, and Scotty Young has um, a huge name in the industry. But forget and that. a huge, huge female fan following. Absolutely. But forget that, Brian. Guess what we're actually going to talk about? We're going to talk about the baby variants. Um, long laughed at by people like Brian and I. Um, long thought of as just a gimmick, exhausted. They did way too many of them, yada, yada, yada. Why are we where we are? Well, first off, one thing that's got people talking about Scotty Young and the baby variants is the Venom 23 variant. Now, when this got solicited and we saw Scotty Young and everybody's mind went to the baby variants, this book got ignored. Then the cover art came out and we saw Donny Cates and Ryan Stegman depicted on the cover. And with Donny Cates' immense popularity, this book sold out. We're looking at 10, 15, $20 prices being paid the day before release for this book. Um, very atypical of Scotty Young. But then you start doing some research into Scotty Young baby variants. You know what you're going to see, Brian? You're going to see high ratio Scotty Young baby variants. Um, some of the rare times where they've done them at like one in 100, selling well over the ratio because of completionists. You're going to see some of those early Scotty Young variants back before we all got jaded from these things. When we let's admit it, when it was thought, really cool. Yeah. We all hey, thought they cute. were kind of cute at, in the beginning. Um, we all were picking them up and then realized, man, I'm not buying these things forever. Um, and some of those early ones are selling for 15, 20, $25. It's really kind of surprising. Some of the more recent ones by like Venom, um, just about every Scotty Young baby Venom that's ever been done is a $15 to $20 book. Um, a lot of them just take time. And it's funny because I was really trying to decide what's the rhyme or reason why some have gotten valuable and some haven't. Um, is, is it a print run thing? Is it a character popularity? I don't know. And another thing is one of the, we've talked on the channel about trying to find positive ROI from getting um, gold label signature series CGC books. Uh, we've talked about that. How it's a lot of the hot books that people try to get signed aren't always the positive ROIs. Well, I'll tell you one real positive ROI is Scotty Young. If you get a 9-8 signed gold label Scotty Young baby variant, I don't care what the cover is, it's $100. It's $100 all day. And your cost is probably going to be around the 40s for that. Um, and that's a, only in recent years has it even got that expensive as Scotty Young started charging like $20 for CGC books. Previously, they'd be free. Still to this day, though, he will sign books for free. Um, and he will sign, I think, I think five at a time for free. You have to get back in the line. Um, but I've sold signed Scotty Young books raw, no authentication to him, $15, $20, $25. Because like you said, he's got a female fan base, a younger fan base. And while guys like us in our 30s and 40s may look at it and go, it's a cute niche, but I'm so over it by now. It, there is a group of collector who have kind of grown up in this hobby collecting these books and there are completionists that exist within this this realm and some of these books are getting expensive and i think that it's kind of undercover and it's another reason why i love this show where we get to talk about these things and it's extra important heading into con season yeah and if you get a chance you haven't done so and you go to a con and there's an opportunity to meet scotty young definitely do it great guy awesome guy very personable we'll sit there and talk to you about all types of books one of the best people I like to meet when you go to a con. But here's a question for you. Which do you think there's more of? Scotty Young baby variants or Spider-Man 300 homage variants? 
Oh man, I want to say Scott Young baby variants, but but at least those are all different covers. But, right? Yeah, but, boy, it's a competition. But yeah, at least I'll tell you what, I'll take the Scott Young baby variants over the Spider Man 300 homages, and I don't care how rare they are at this point. Yeah. So that's the three up portion, real quick, before we get into that three down portion. Do us a favor, comment on this video, let us know what do you think is hot, what do you think is cold in comics right now? I'm gonna tell you right now. Do you want to do that comment? Because we have a giveaway that we're going to announce at the end of this video. That's going to go to those comments of what is hot and cold. So make sure you do that. Comment. And while you're at it, click that thumbs up button for us. But either way, let's get into the three down portion right now. And we're going to start with Danielle Cage Thor. Yes. Now, I know that we may be picking on something that you and I weren't real big on when it came out. And we may be, I think we're getting the reputation of first appearance cynics a bit. But when this first came out, Dead Man Logan 11 and 12, we caught a little bit of heat, specifically me, because I had number 12 on the Bolo list for first appearance. It was being listed by other sources as first appearance. I don't know whether what the market's going to call it, so I try not to play that game. The Bolo list is early, right? It's, it's release day. We don't know where things are going to land first appearance, but... That was the controversy of, for that book on release day. But there were a lot of staunch supporters of this book. And I said, you know, this is a, a Elseworld style story, right? Way in the future. We've already seen Daniel Cage's Captain America, and that wasn't really a huge thing. The same logic I used with my Batwoman, kind of beyond argument. Danielle Cage's first appearance doesn't go for that much. Um, why would her first appearance be kind of a less valuable book than this? And, and people kind of jumped on board of this book, but it's like everything else in comics. Uh, now Avengers Wasteland, the actual miniseries that kind of surrounded this character has come out. We've gone past issue number one. Nobody cares. Avengers Wasteland number one came out and really nobody talked about it. Um, if you look at sales for Dead Man Logan 11 and 12, you see two things happening, Brian. Number one, you've seen the prices drop to about $10. Um, 15 to 20 for the set of two. The other thing you've seen is, well, you and I have talked about this, maybe more important than like pricing, you've seen the demand drop off. You're seeing a sale every three or four days um, versus when this book came out on release day and like 30 or 40 or 50 copies got sold within that day by those flippers who were, you know, one, one it, speculators say they're selling it to each other, but they're not. It's a flipper is selling it to an investor. Um, and, and if you flipped, good job. I'm sure you made some money. If you were investing in this one, I think you're going to get uh, caught holding the bag on this one. Right. And then moving on to the next part of the three down, we're going to talk about Storm Ranger as well. Yeah. Right. And this is a character I like, um, but it, this is just reality. This is how little patience the, the secondary market community has. Um, we're seeing these same trends happen with Miss Marvel number five, Miss Marvel number 10. Now, they're selling for more money. We're seeing Miss Marvel number five sell for about 15. Miss Marvel number 10 sell for about 10. But this is down from their highs, and you're starting to see the slowdown. The uh, late printings that came out, those sets were selling very well upon release. Now they seem to be everywhere for cover price. So um, the key as we leave this storyline is what is going to happen with this um, long term. One character who's kind of avoided that is Star. Star is still selling consistently. Star's first appearances are still selling consistently. Star number one is selling consistently. Um, Star variants are selling consistently. But we're seeing these other first appearances where the market has kind of moved on to the next book and people are forgetting about them. That the prices are dropping. I will say I think Storm Ranger has a chance if this is a character who's going to be a part of Miss Marvel mythos long term. But time's really going to tell. Kamala Khan's really kind of a, a character in its infancy. So do you think the introduction of Amulet coming up, we talked about in the last call, do you think that's going to take attention from Storm Ranger, or do you think it might be a possibility of the storylines to help both of those characters grow? The storyline could help both of those grow if it, it just really depends on what it is. Yeah. But I think in the short term, it'll take attention. Um, it just that attention span. Shiny every, object at the time. Yeah, and Amulet's even worse because we know about it in advance versus Storm Ranger who caught us off guard. So we were all caught off guard, which is why that book shot up to $15, $20. It's not a high-printed book. Um, I think the print run is going to jump significantly with everybody knowing Amulet's coming. All right. 
Then the last one we're going to talk about in the three down portion we've kind of talked about on different shows here between Bolo Show and other items that have come up. We've talked about it. And it's been talked about on social media recently, but it's one that's not necessarily cold, but it's something of the opinion from Simple Man's Comics between Jack and I. We're kind of against this, and we're talking about artificial scarcity. Yeah, it's a trend we're seeing pop up more and more in the hobby. And it's just one that Brad and I are personally very cold on. Um, and I think some I've heard, and the reason why it came up and we wanted to include it on the list is we've heard a lot of social media talk in the last week. There have been several posts on various forums and boards and places on the internet. Um, and the question gets posed to us quite often about print runs as it comes, this artificial scarcity where it comes into play most frequently is with retailer exclusive variants. Now, we use the slogan integrity and community as being at the core staple of right of what we are as a channel um and f for our in full transparency brian and i've been very actively involved in the creation of store variants in the past but we can stand comfortably with that because we always worked very hard to be as transparent as possible with the process so when we released a variant um we let everyone know where the allocation of copies were. So if you can go back and you can watch any video announcement of us releasing a variant, Brian and I will say there's 250 copies printed, 150 are being sold, 50 are being allocated to writers, 50 are being allocated for giveaways, the other 150 will be sold, this is the price. Or the retailers getting some of them. Yeah, so we were all, we were, extremely publisher not retailer yeah, publisher um, right the publisher um uh, which some publishers would require to do micro print runs so if you wanted to do a hundred print run of a book a small retailer may, uh, a small publisher may say well okay you can do that but let us have 10 because we want to have every book we create we want to have at least some representation of um so we were always really transparent with that because it, it, it's really funny we do retailer exclusives, right? Because Brian, there's no other comics in the market where we know what the print runs are. So why do we feel entitled to know what the print run is for retailer exclusives? I really don't know that, but we do, right? The market basically demands it. Um, and we've seen that change a lot over the years, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. You know, in the early days, I remember back when we were on like the, the old CBSI boards, um, there in the, when stores first started doing retailer exclusives, there was a lot of lying. There was a lot of retailers who would say that a book was printed 500 and they would get caught selling multiple thousands onto the market. It was the wild west. And I think that the market because of that demanded a level of transparency. Um, and we've seen that over the years and now the market's pretty smart, right? People know that like when Marvel requires you, if you're going to do a variant, and we've talked about this openly on the channel, they require a 3,000 print run minimum order. Same with DC. Um, and, you know, places, independent companies like Image, they'll do smaller, but the larger ones like Image and uh, Boom usually require about 500. And then if you're going down to like Mad Cave or places like that, you can, you can literally almost kind of negotiate that between you and the the uh, publisher but we're seeing more and more Brian we're seeing like Marvel variants solicited with the print run listed far lower than 300,000 aren't we yes very a lot like a quarter of it <laughs> right and how is that possible well it's not possible and this is what becomes uh, a really an issue and where we kind of like we're talking about it a lot and we want to know what you guys think in the comment section because Brian and I, we want to, in the future, we want to produce uh, Simpleman's Comics variants. But this is just something we would never do, which is to print 3,000 of a book. Now, yes, there's going to be some damages, right? And that's going to naturally affect the print. Um, but we're seeing more and more stores solicit that there's a 600 print run for a book. Um, I know you've seen it on Instagram. I know you've seen it on your favorite websites. And... In reality, there was 3,000 printed. So what are they doing with the other 2,400 copies of these books? Well, allegedly, they're destroying them. Now, some of them, we, yeah, some of them do, and they show it, right? Right. We see the, the spectrum of that. We've seen videos of stores destroying it. 
We've seen stores claim it. Um, we've seen stores give away the coverless copy as a reader copy with the with the book that you ordered. Um, we've seen every variation between, but the truth is we don't see anyone coming out there saying there's 3,000 printed of this book. We're destroying 2,400 and we're selling 600. Um, instead, you know, you're getting the 600 print run being advertised, but you're not getting the other part, the messy part of this, this whole equation advertised because some of the comic community doesn't want to think about 2,400 books being torn apart. Um, and scarcity determines pricing, right? So if you look at any of those variants that are limited to 600, they tend to have a higher price. Um, yeah, versus because if they are destroying them, they're, they got to still pay for them. But exactly. now they're destroying them to, to make it scarce. Right. So if a book is $4 cover price and you're paying $2 a book um, and you have to order 3000 that's $6,000. If you destroy 2400 and you're left with 600 well, you're now into them for $10 each versus being into them for $2 each. And so you've got to charge more in order yeah. to make any sort of a positive ROI. Not to mention you ordered 3,000 of them. So you're going to get, if it's a hot book with a bunch of great incentives, you're getting all those incentives from the 3,000 that you ordered, not the 500 that you're selling. Exactly. And that's the thing. So that's, it's another part of where this kind of misconception where I personally have an issue with it. Um, I think that I, uh, uh, there's so many, there's such a distaste for, for the retailer um, exclusive programs, but I think that they're really essential to today's modern kind of comic and how you advertise yourself. Um, and I'm, I feel like we're blessed to work with people who do it right, um, who are very forthcoming with their print runs. Um, and it's not necessarily an indictment on any, any individual, but it's something I'm seeing pop up more and more and more in the hobby. And people are starting to ask that question. And because we talk about print runs, people come to us and say, well, you know, if a person you know, well, what about say a grab bag or a mystery box? Like, how can they do it? Well, no, like we, if we printed uh, a book with DC comics and we did a 3000 print run and we included one in every bolo box and we didn't want another copy to go out besides the bolo box. Well, I'd have to have either 3000 bolo boxes signed up or I'd have to destroy or do something else, put them in a warehouse. We don't know. But the more transparency you get from a variant program, the more you know what collectible you actually have. Otherwise, you're paying money for false scarcity and you're being manipulated by a company. A company is causing you to pay more money than you ever would. And, and why is that, is that accepted within the comic community? Um, it's certainly not on, at, for myself as a consumer. And it's certainly nothing I ever want to take part in. And it was a discussion as we developed our variant program um, previously with Comic Book Invest, and it was something that Brian and I were very staunchly against that we said we never wanted to take part in. But uh, again, let us know in the comments section how you guys feel about these retailer exclusive variant print runs and the, the need for transparency. And how do you guys feel about part of the print run being destroyed and uh, artificial scarcity in general? Yeah, it's just, again, we want to just reiterate. That's our opinion. That's why we don't like it. That's not to say there's something wrong with you, yeah. the buyers, or you. We always say, always say, it's your money. Buy what you like. I don't understand how people let people influence what they're going to buy and collect because they're not the ones, unless they're saying, hey, here's 20 bucks. I want you to buy this for your collection. They have no right to decide what you're going to buy for your collection. So by all means, if you want to go buy them, buy them. It's just, we're voicing our opinion on what we think about stuff like that. And that's why we also, like we said, we like to work with the channel sponsors that we have and say like Frankie's comics, every one of his, he puts up there. There's always starting with the 3000 trade dress and then there'll be this many virgin copies, but they hit that 3000 and it's all put there on the website. Starting with like one that just went up for sale last night at 9 PM. They, that Gwen Stacy G hung Lee variant up there right now. Yeah. Gwen Stacy number two. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous. So there's 3,000 trade dress. There's also 1,000 virgin. You can get the trade dress for 15 bucks. You can get the set for, what is it, uh, 50 bucks. And then they have some CGC copies. And he even sees for the CGC copies that they'll be 9.6 or better. So if you're looking for that CGC and you want to look up there, you want to make sure you know that it's not guaranteed 9.8, but they are saying 9.6 or better. And they have this uh, CGC of the trade dress, the virgin, and they also have SS options up there as well. 
or signature series for those that aren't aware. But another thing we want to talk about, talking about Frankie's comics, we were going to give away, there's 3,000 of these in existence, by the way, Thor, number one, and Heckley, this was Frankie's comics. I'm pretty sure he partnered with some other exclusive retailers also, but we're going to give this away next week on the next edition of the three up, three down. And all you have to do to win it, like we said earlier, comment on this video. What do you think is up or down in the comic market right now? Always anxious to know that. And we will pick a winner from that and they will win that copy. And we will also display some of the other comments up on the screen of what people are thinking is hot and cold, right, Jack? Absolutely, yeah. We'd love to hear your insight and opinion because again, you guys are the comic market. So let us know what you see moving and shaking. So there it is, guys. That's three up, three down. This is Brian and Jack with Some Men's Comics. And we'll see you guys in the next video.